Hello there internet dwellers, welcome back to another video. Today I thought we could look at something that's been submitted to me on my Discord quite a few times, to the point where finally I'm going to go check it out. Apparently it was meant to be like an April Fool's thing. I would have like reacted to this and put it up yesterday, but me and the guys already decided we was going to put up our reactions to the FNAF set, so. But yeah, we're going to jump into this today. So it's called Winter of 83, and it's by Linkara Atop the Fourth Wall. It's over an hour long, so we're just going to kick back, relax, have a good time. If you guys do enjoy, be sure to go check out the creator down below. And if you enjoy my reaction, why not leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. An analog horror film, chron chron how the f do you say this word? Chronicle. Yeah, but chronicling. Oh, chronicling. Learn to pronounce. Here we go. Chronicle. Okay. Chronicle. Okay. British pronunciation. American pronunciation. Chronicle. Chronicle. Brilliant. Let's practice. Chronicle. Oh, you may have pronounced the R. Chronicle. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go, baby. In January of 1983, most of the people living in the town of Fawn Circle, Minnesota, disappeared. In the investigation that followed, a significant, a significant number of video and audio recordings were recovered. Covered. I love stuff like this that tells a story. Like I watched um, Lake Mungo. Is it called Lake Mungo? Mungo? And, and I watched it before, but I completely forgot that I watched it before. Uh, it was only until like towards the end of the actual film that I was like, oh, hang on, I think I've seen this one before. But it's like a fake documentary and it and it and it's done in such a way where it feels so real and it was so good. The recovered material has significant irreparable damage. The most relevant recordings were assembled into what you see here in chronological order in an attempt to explain what happened to Fawn Circle. Chronological. Okay. Let's, let's hear that in slow motion. Chronological. Chronological. What? Why am I mispronouncing the R? The time is now 12 a.m. K80. All right, let's see the... Okay, there's actually going to be... K3FC now concludes its programming schedule. Okay. Channel 83 will resume its broadcast at 7 a.m. Thank you for watching K83FC. No worries, Channel man. 83. You sometimes forget because uh, you, nowadays you get like 24 hour channels that do, channels that just go on and go on and go on but you forget that you know there are channels that stop at a certain time like i wasn't aware that cartoon network turned into adult swim past a certain time bfc is owned and operated by the spencer sheridan foundation okay providing quality local television to fawn circle and neighboring cities in redwood county minnesota since 1975. okay brilliant our offices are located at 2713 pinewood street in fawn circle minnesota postal code 56283 k83 fc is empowered to transmit by the federal communications commission Washington, D.C. Okay. We hope you've enjoyed today's programming and that you'll join us again in the morning. I will. I will. America! Benjamin Franklin is the founding fathers. Hamilton? Who the fuck is that? I know nothing about American... I know some things about American history. Not a lot, though. What is this? Oh. What was that? Oh. Okay. What the... Why are you showing these images? It's Abe. Okay, so it's pretty cool because it's like it's showing that something's not quite right here. What was? What is that? Oh, good transition, man. Industrial Revolution. Okay, World World War. One or two? What? Who is that? There's someone dead in the snow there. It's like The Shining. Top stock drops 14 billion, did I just say? Okay, this is World War Two. 
America. Are you man, brother? Now, one thing I learned about being in America, guys, is that you guys are so extroverted. And as an Englishman who's very introverted and just Can keeps. Hear me? Hello. Uh, look, we need we need help down here. Uh, please send somebody to rescue us. I'm begging you. We're in the basement of Scott's Manor. It's getting so cold down here. It's... Please, please, you have to help us. They're going to bury us down here. No, 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 no. <laughs> Okay, well, that was probably nothing. Let's go to sleep. Hope this is in focus. Yeah. It's Earth from the moon. So this is the 50s, or 60s. Is it 1956? When man walked on the... No, was it 19... Oh, I forgot. I think it was the 60s. Late 50s. Okay. Recording now. Are you sure? I don't want it to be like last week where the cameraman forgot to turn the mic on and we recorded an interview for half an hour before they noticed. Yeah, I'm positive. I'm I've done that before. In readings here. Not with the interview, okay, but... Okay, but just leave the lens cap on until we get there. I'm pretty sure I smudged my lipstick and I want to fix it before we get anything. I'm telling you, it's fine. Let me be the judge of that. Still, while we're recording the audio, might as well get some background first. Sheriff Douglas, how are you today? Oh, not so bad, you. I'm I'm not so fine. bad, you. So, <laughs> Hello. tell me a little bit about Scott's Manor. Well, Scott's Manor used to be the mayor's mansion back in the 60s, with the last occupant being Richard Scott. Okay. The place was closed for renovations in, oh, 68 or so. Oh, okay. And the city had a big budget crisis back then, and they decided to hold off on the renovations for a year. The year became two years, then five, then ten, and, Chris well, Douglas. here we are. Last September, some people from the U of M Science Department decided to rent it out to finally complete the renovations, mm -hmm. while also using the space for some science experiment or whatnot. And the story is about the manor being haunted. Well, before the research people moved so in, we got the occasional call about seeing something weird or about kids breaking in and spray painting their gang tags or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we didn't really pay any mind to it. With the manor being closer to the farm, what, like what accent is this? Really is it Canadian? During anyone? Or is this a Minnesota accent? It is Ooh. weird that sounds like Kermit the Frog. The mayor's mansion was like Jordan Peterson. Away from the town. Well, that's one of the reasons why the renovations kept getting postponed. Hello there, Jordan Southern, Peterson. No laws got passed. The mayor actually had to live closer to the center of town after that. Mm. And why are we going out to the manor today? Oh, hey now, you know the reasons even better than we do. Yes. Oh, come on now. Oh, I tell well, you I what. Like you guys over at the channel, I'm going to give you a bloody Galaxy thumping. Galaxy Detective is a fun little show I can watch with my kids, but it feels like these hijackings are happening daily now. That's Let not, me move this over here. That's not entirely true. We had a week or two before the last one. There's not much we can do about it, sadly. The transmitter's not that strong. The reason the call sign for the station has FC in it is because Fawn Circle is really the only town that gets the broadcast, so... Oh. The station owner just figured to, you know, lean into it. And that means anyone with a stronger transmitter on the frequency can take over. And I wouldn't put it past some of those U of M kids being responsible. Well, we can certainly look into it when we get there. If it is then, then maybe you guys can get back to normal. Oh, I tell you what. Greg! It's true! Well, hang on a sec. What do you mean by that? <sighs> the station's not doing so well. Problem with a station that barely reaches anybody? Maybe, Chaska, on a good day, is that... Nobody watches. And the thing is, even if somehow the station okay. does get a better transmitter, <clears throat> it can reach more people. So what, they're going there to get a transmitter? Anyway. We don't know that. There's a rumor going around that the FCC is going to reassign a bunch of TV frequencies, particularly the high ones, to emergency services. Uh. Dicky little UHF stations like ours aren't going to cut it anymore and we'll have to shut down. Oh, so it's either they go in there to get a better transmitter, or they go in there to get a story that will put them in the, the, the spotlight. Well, until it actually happens, I'm not admitting defeat. I haven't put five years into K83 just to see it go out like disco. Well, you can get to it right now. We're coming up on the manor. Okay, Greg, We're switch coming it off up on the manor. For... Here we go. God, he shut that off quick. Hello there. So this is the manor. God, it's in better days. So 
So there's a research team in there. Do they know that they're in the basement dead at this point, or...? Hello! Hey, Hello there! Hello. How are you doing there, Dr. buddy? Kendra. Hello! Jesus, I thought they were renovating this place. It looks like it hasn't been touched in decades. Greg, get some B-roll shots while I fix my makeup, please. So Willie's Wonderland. Right I'm not sure what's going on myself. This place I don't know about like that voice. Place. I can't take it seriously. Oh, no, obviously it's Kermit the Frog. Yeah, but it looks like it got in everywhere. The place still had intact doors and windows. They had finished that back in November. You'd have to break the whole damn house to make a mess like this. Hmm. Dr. Meredith. Oh, look at the snow. It's Dr. taking Kendra. over. It's like a blizzard ran through the whole place. It was maybe half an inch of snow last week. What the hell happened here? Maybe the signal hijacking wasn't kidding. Don't get started. However, Rhonda. Yes, Chris? Radio the station, get some more bodies out here to help search. And call Mercy General and tell them to have an ambulance on standby in case we need it. I'm gonna go check upstairs. All right, okay. back in a minute. So they're unaware okay. right now that there's Greg, researchers. Greg, get and yell if you find anything. Got it. So who shut them in the basement though? Let me try on this slipper, and we're gonna go to the ball. What did Cinderella say when she got to the ball, guys? <laughs> Thank you, I'll be here all week. It is Cinderella, right? Yeah. It's a big old manna, baby. I've never, I don't really see much hey, of it. Viv! Sheriff, I think I found the basement! Oh, okay, here we go. Viv! So they're gonna find them. Hey, are you down there? Hello? Okay, so they were. They were. Woo! What? It's like a whole ass freaking snowstorm happening. So this is chronological order. So this is going in. Calling this meeting of the Fawn Circle City Council for January 4th, 1983 to order. Roll call. Thank you, Eric. It's a practice to begin by reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, God. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the chambers of the Bond Circle City Council. We have. Uh, I don't mean to be funny about that, but the ple the ple pledge of allegiance sounds very cultish to me. You know what I mean? Like, there's obviously the there's the national anthem, like the UK national anthem's "God Save the Queen" or "King." Now, I guess it would be, but pledge of allegiance is different to the national anthem right it just seems very cultish to a me a business to go over today so i suppose we should just get right to it no offense the obviously the matter of course is the blizzard that's going to hit our fine little city and the rest of the western part of the state the current weather forecast says we'll have heavy snowfall tonight a lull in the storm in the afternoon tomorrow for a couple hours but then we're going to get hit with another 10 inches of snow damn now, we put in a request to Minneapolis to send us some additional snow plows, but they haven't gotten back to us yet. In case they don't send them, let's get the word out to people to stay calm and not start hoarding food from the supermarket shelves. Yeah, we'll well, all clear away. humans are terrible for that, aren't they? When COVID first hit, you'd go into a supermarket, toilet roll would be gone. It makes no sense. Why are people getting all the toilet roll for? Are you, you, gonna, are you planning on shitting yourself to death? I don't understand. There was no so, like side effects of dying from shitting. I don't understand why you need so much tissue. Obviously to blow your nose maybe, but do you really need to <laughs> wipe out an, an entire shelf? People are assholes, you know that? Humanity sucks. We're in a day or two afterward. A councilman Brilling, you said you had something uh, you wanted to... Barack Obama. Bring up with this? Grilled cheese Obama sandwich. Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to consider purchasing at least two new snow plows. Okay. Obviously, we won't be able to use them for this blizzard, but the current plows are 15 years old and starting to get a bit sluggish. Mm -hmm. In fact, I suspect that day or two you mentioned may be more like three days. 
given how they operated on the storm a few weeks ago. Several businesses What's are behind on the street oh, said they flag. lost some potential Christmas business because of it. Do we have a second for that motion? Yeah, we have a of that money. Councilman Berling, please put together a full proposal along with a recommendation for where to buy them from, and we'll vote on it next week. Why the, the th well, can people sit in on these meetings? Mm -hmm. Next, uh, it seems like no one's there, and they're r like round a table that's kind of directed at an audience. But if there's no audience there, it's a bit awkward talking to each other. You're there just looking forward, and you have to keep leaning like this. The agenda. A representative from the U of M campus was going to discuss the restoration work at Scott's Manor and potentially request for funding and labor with the project. Okay. Is the representative present? I see what they've done here, actually. Because this is an actual meeting, obviously, that they've taken and just distorted so, so that you can't see the mouth matching up and stuff. You know, spoilers, whatever. Like, I'm breaking the fourth wall there. The representative and they've comes obviously in taken this the meetings, let them know they can approach the podium and we'll desk return to them. and cut it out and then put in, like, a still image here of chairs because there's probably people actually in these chairs. Next, a representative from K83FC wanted to speak to us. K83FC. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Hello there, Mr. Mayor. Well, here he is. My name is uh, Darren Frederick. I'm the general manager of K83FC. Handle budget decisions over... Oh, no, hang on. There are people here. ...programming choices and several other duties there. For several years now, we have been privileged to operate the station, known most around here as Channel 83, out of Fawn Circle. We've tried to provide a lot of entertaining programs to the citizens of this city, as well as providing many jobs to locals. Anywhere from electricians to actors and our original programming to just simple janitors, we're part of this community. Mm-hmm. This very city council meeting is being broadcast for people to watch from home so more people can be involved in decisions involving our fair city. However, this is a piece of paper. Going well for the station as of late. Syndication packages for programming are becoming more expensive. We have competition as more and more people embrace cable television, and advertisers are not as interested in investing in ad space. Mm -hmm. What I'm here to request from you today is a stimulus into this part of the community. Some additional funds. To help us through this rough patch as we adapt to changing standards in our industry. Let me stop you for a second there. <laughs> Why don't you shut up? You're irrelevant. You fell off, okay? Go fuck yourself. Whoa! Mr. Hang Frederick. on a sec, Daniel. How Daniel. much are you asking for exactly? Yeah, uh, $75,000. Go fuck yourself. Over the next three months. Three months? Gee, what are you planning on doing with that money? That was a lot of money in the 80, uh, 1983. Come to order. Mr. Frederick. We are not Minneapolis. Hell, we're not even Wilmar. That kind of money for one struggling business is yeah, that's not ridiculous. acceptable. I know it's a lot, but we give back to the community in a lot of ways. With all due respect, Mr. Frederick, I disagree. No, you don't. <laughs> some of your assertions. You claim to be contributing to the community with your programming, but my family watches Channel 83. Most of what you show there is stuff found in syndication that you can find elsewhere. We've, uh, we, we've had to take on syndicated programming due to budgeting issues. For what does that mean? Right. What's syndicated programming? Let's search this up, guys, as we go along. Because sometimes I'll say things and it sounds... is a program that runs on a different television network than the one on which it was initially broadcast. Or a program that was not created for a specific network. In the US, syndication generally comes in two forms. First run syndication and off network. I still don't know what it means. It was explained to me and I still don't understand it. So it's just basically something that isn't set to a certain channel. What makes no, s okay, whatever. Frankly, those original shows leave a lot to be desired. A lot They're to be cheap desired. looking, the educational content for kids has been, well, wrong a lot of the time. And frankly, I know several local actors who refuse to work for you because they're embarrassed to be a part of such terrible shows. We've had to cut corners. And the stimulus could really And most especially, Mr. Frederick, even if we thought the programming was worth investing in, your station's transmitter is very Shit. low power. And mm. as a result, you've had several signal hijackings of late. Some okay, of interesting. So that's probably what it was at the start, though someone was hijacking the signal, showing like pictures of like a dead Serving body. and not at all appropriate for the children of this The community. children. Think of the children, man. Community. We have been investigating the hijacking, sir. And it should be noted, they always occurred late It was night. a big thing, I think, back in, like, the 80s, like, uh, in cable TV or whatever, when it, like, yeah, 70s, 80s, 90s. 
the hijacking was a huge thing. It was easy to do. I Regardless, think. you want us to invest a not so insignificant amount of money into a business like yours that is not exactly proving itself to be worthy of such an investment. Would you be open to negotiating the investment? At least hearing us out further about this. No. <sighs> <laughs> All right. I'm not unreasonable. Make your case and we'll discuss it. We can start Excuse with... Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I've just been informed that there have been some developments at Scott's Manor and Ooh. Sheriff Douglas needs to speak with you immediately. They have embraced My apologies, us. Mr. Frederick and everyone gathered today, it seems to me to cut this meeting short. And Mr. so Frederick, will you. another city council meeting on the 6th. We'll discuss your request again at that time. Of course. Still looks like Stephen Merchant. meeting is now adjourned. meeting is now adjourned. Excuse me, Darcy Milbanks? Yes? I'm Carl Denby, the private investigator you contacted. You wanted to speak to me about your brother? Yes, uh, thank you for coming. I'll be with you in just a moment. I just need to shut down the camera feed and, and the audio oh. recording, and I'll be right- Why- what? Why wouldn't you just shut it down immediately? Alrighty. When you're ready, I do have a few things I can go over already. Okay, interesting. Obviously, I say these things, You're but it's like, K if they did do the things I'm saying, there would be no story, so... K 83 FC. Coming up next, it's the Tuesday Night Movie. The 1951 science fiction classic, The Thing from Another World. Interesting. After that, Johnson Hughes investigates crimes across the universe in a double showing of Galaxy Detective. And finally, at midnight, K 83 FC will be signing off for the day. Okay. Stay tuned for more of the best local TV this side of the Mississippi. Man, local TV sounds so depressing. An RKO radio picture. Randy Orton slithering in. Alan, I love you. And I love this chance you're giving me. <laughs> the air is just so much more crisp around this time, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do love the air when it snows. It's just... You know what I mean? Brilliant. Especially if you're like in the mountains as well. I love the sound of crunching snow Next beneath like my lake. feet. It's fun. Well, hey there, buddy. Alan. I absolutely love living where it's so cold. <laughs> I know, I know. You'd rather be spending winters in Texas or Hawaii or... Uh, the thing is that the thing I like cold places, but I don't like it too cold to the point where you literally your bones are shivering. You, you know, don't have to deal with the snow and the ice and the freezing. Oh, gosh, it seems so much fresher in winter. I love the tingles of a good shiver and seeing how empty everything is after a fresh snowfall. Yeah, that is nice. The earth is blanketed. I guess what I'm saying is that I'm glad you've let me be the one to capture all this for your B-roll, Alan. Since I know you're just going to remove this audio later when you cut together the footage, I just want you to know that my answer is yes. <laughs> I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I didn't ask you that, honey. The... Wait. Wait. What's what? happening? What is that over there? What is that over there? Hey, Alan? It looks like the area has been roped off because of a pond or lake or something, but... Oh, God. Uh, well, that's the, that's the thing about the heavily snowing areas, is that it covers up, like, water areas. And I guess a lot of people will probably end up falling under the ice and dying I was here because last of it. week while you were visiting your parents. There's nothing here to rope off. What the hell? Oh. <laughs> Alan, this area was closed off for me to film this. No one should be in the park right now, and it snowed last night. But there are foot. I kind of like the vibe of this. Who was? <laughs> <laughs> be an anime actress, voice actor. I'm, I'm sorry. The wind was just. Yeah. She got pushed I over. Know, I was just talking about how I love the cold, but. It just got a bit windier. Felt like the wind chill was eighty below or something. Well, that's the thing with like Great. with like cold things is that the wind makes it feels like Love, it like it's a lot colder than it is. Felt numb for a second there. She got yeah. touched by the Holy Ghost. Uh, look, I think I'm gonna go back to the car and warm up. Yeah, good idea. I want to see where these footprints lead. Don't do that. It's not a good idea. Trust me. 
He's going to look up and there's going to be a freaking dude with his wang out. Just smacking it around. What was wrong with me? Stop. I mean, oh, it's a snowman. Attack of the evil snowman? This is very 80s. What is that? What is that? Oh. What the hell? Right, okay, wow. Evil snowmen. This is good. Is that oh, it got anything to do with the researchers? Were those researchers trapped down there by a certain, like, government officials or whatever, and then they ended up getting... And then maybe there's, like, a... They were working on something down there that morphed them into evil snowmen because the blizzard came through the basement. Or maybe that was it the snowmen that killed those guys? I feel like... I don't know. Flag, I'm empty. Alan, I love the chill. It's so cold. I'm numb. Spend the rest of your life in winter. I'm so cold. Shiver in all the empty. Share in all the empty. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. Okay, so these guys know how to so remix. Cold. Nice. Awesome. So what, are they mimics or are they just... Oh. The Thing, question mark. Hang on, that, there was a name there. James Arnus. James Arnus is The Thing. Interesting. I don't know who that is. Why did I say interesting? As if I knew who that was. But I guess it's interesting the fact that they replace it with question marks. Background interview for reference, January 5th, 1983. Discussion with client Darcy Milbanks on the subject of her missing brother, Stephen Milbanks. Mm -hmm. This interview is being conducted for a second time. The original interview tape conducted on January 4th has somehow been corrupted and is now unlistenable. Oh. Why is it so important to go over this again? Don't you remember what I said yesterday? There is it's for the, it's for the, the record. the possibility that something you say could provide a helpful clue that I need to refer back to. It could be something I didn't catch the first time we talked. I know what you're saying to me won't be exactly what you said yesterday, but please try to repeat all the information you mentioned the last time we did this, Miss Milbanks. Okay, I'll try. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Darcy Milbanks, and I'm a videographer in Fawn Circle. I mostly do work for City Hall, recording important meetings and putting together local PSAs and stuff. And why do you require the services of a private detective like me? Oh, my brother, okay. Steve Got you, so that this was the woman from the the meeting. Ben was hired recently to do renovations at Scott's Manor. Ah. Stevens, well, he's not a bum exactly, but he hasn't been good at keeping a job. He's mm -hmm. too lazy and prefers to just hang out with his girlfriend, Stephanie. I mean, we weren't made to work nine to five, guys, you know? Our work weeks were, the, the whole reason we work nine to five is because of the Industrial Revolution. And since then, it's just caught on, and that's the norm now. We shouldn't be doing that, okay, guys? <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. I, I wonder if that's why he got together with her. Hmm. The similar names and all made it easier oh, for Oh, Stephen him. and Stephanie. Please continue. Made it easier for him? How much of a simpleton is this Sorry, man? Um, anyway, while he's not good at keeping a job as an usher at the Cineplex, he did graduate from college last year with a degree in carpentry, so oh. this was his chance to finally get some decent paying work for his field. The thing about that, guys, I know I keep pausing, I'm sorry, is that a lot of, like, these high, like, what you'd consider, I don't know, some, some like, builders are pay paid a lot more than certain high... What, what's considered high-grade jobs? He's been doing it the last few months, but several days ago we went And yet they're work. looked down on. And then he just didn't come home. Well, they're not looked down on, but... No one has seen anyway, him I'll stop. or his girlfriend since then. I tried to talk to the cops, but they just think he and Stephanie eloped. Mm -hmm. They had talked about it before, but I haven't been able to find her either. And why don't you believe they'd do this? 
Stephen may not like doing work, but he's always known that he needed to do it. Mm -hmm. Our parents both died when we were teenagers, Stephen at 17. He was close enough to adulthood that he was given custody of me, and he was declared a legal adult. Since then, while he's had a tough time keeping a job, he's always made sure to get one so he could pay the bills. He would not have just up and left without a single word. And even then, he would have contacted me by now to let me know he was okay and what was going on. Have you made any attempt to contact anyone working at Scott's Manor to see if they could shed some light on things? (sighs) They don't have a working phone up there yet, so I've had to go in person. Mm. I went twice to see if anybody knew anything, but no luck. They say he came into work one day, did his shift, and they never saw him again. Okay. And it is here, Miss Milbanks, that I must update you with new information that I discovered since our conversation yesterday. What, you found something? Yes. Sort of. What do you mean? I believe I found your brother's car. Oh dear. Oh, that's what the thing was at the, the start. Plates were missing. Where? And you didn't find him? Easy, Darcy. Easy. Easy, Darcy. I was Darcy. on my way to Scott's Come on yesterday now. to interview them myself when I came across the car along the side of a country road. It had been abandoned, but I didn't find any footprints leading anywhere. Just a lot of snow in the tires. Probably from that storm the other day. Mm-hmm. There was a half-eaten bag of chips in it, but nothing else to indicate who it belonged to. Why haven't you reported this to the cops what yet? What was that sound? That's the thing, Darcy. I was that in the video? It, or at least I tried to. I drove to the police station and reported, but there was nobody there. No receptionist, no cops, most of their cars were gone. I waited for an hour for someone to show up, but nobody did. What the hell are we supposed to do now, then? I want you to keep trying to get in touch with the cops. Give them my number. I don't know. Maybe everyone's just busy with the storm. I'm going to try to head to Scott's Manor today to see what I can find out. He's gonna Though die. I admit that may not be possible if the road's not. Is it recording again now? Oh. Yeah. It's the same thing that happened to our original interview. Must be something wrong with the tape recorder. Anyway, we're going to get to the bottom of this. Don't well, I don't know about that, Chief. God, I hope so. Drive careful out there. He, he later died in a car crash. Here's what's coming up tonight on K83FC. Come- so the, the, the whole, um, this whole vibe is like, there's some kind of entity in this town or whatever this place is, small little town. And it's kind of like Local 58 in which it's taken over, well, it's taken over the, well, it's hijacking basically the, the airwaves Coming or up whatever. Next is the, animators of e- the animators of evil, Satanism. Evil. A panel discussion about the apparent prevalence of Satanism in cartoons. Like Followed what? At 7 by Space 1999. At 8 o'clock, yuck it up with the Three Stooges. And at 8.30, Barnaby Jones. Burn Stay tuned for more of the best local TV this side of the Mississippi. It's a new year, and that means new savings at Sid's Electronics Boutique. We've got huge discounts on brand name electronics. This pan- they've got they've got the vibe right. They've got the aesthetic the just right. Tape boombox stereo is now only one hundred nine ninety five. That's a bargain. Portable, this Panatronic AM FM radio is only forty nine ninety five. To think that we take advantage of these things. We can just go on our phone, hit like download an app and like listen to like a radio now. But back then, they're paying what you would pay for a normal, just like a phone in general. Who knows what the future holds, guys? You heard it. Come on down to Sid's Electronics Boutique just off Highway 59 and Chippewa Road. No. Okay, so where where are we now? Is this still like the Sid Sid's electronic? Okay, it's still Sid's electronics. Okay, hey, Sid, here we are. This is the store. Using your camera to record me locking up the store as you requested. See, here's your sign. It's your store. Uh huh. Freezing my ass off out here. Just what, Sid? What is the logic here? Are you willing to prove I'm not a thief while handing me an expensive camera? Uh, look, I get it. The best <laughs> He's got a point. Ridiculous. I'm standing out here in the freezing cold while a blizzard is going on just to prove I did lock up the store? If I took anything, I'm not likely to film myself doing it, am I? <laughs> look at all this. Nobody's around. Nobody's breaking in to do this at night. He's got a good point. 
somebody has us about the damn computers or a TV or something, and we're all distracted, and their buddy goes in and steals a car phone. <laughs> you ask any store in the area, it's the same thing. The hell, why not just install some security cameras or something, man? Yeah, that's, that's a lot. Your efforts with me putting this on tape? Why are you going to do it? Can you help me with this? With what? Hello? Hello? Can you help me with this? Can you help me? Hello? Sounds like Bo Burnham. Who's there? Hey, can you help me with this? Hey, how you doing? Hey, how, how are you? I can't see you. Where are you? Help me with this. Help me with this. Are they like mimics? Oh, I bet it's a mimic. It's like freaking. Help me with this. <laughs> help me with this. Oh, oh, you're. I can help you out here. That is. That's they're, the friendliest accent ever. Is it Canadian? It can't be Canadian. Yeah, I'm following your voice, but I can't see you anywhere. It's hard to see through the snow. Hello? Who are you? Men? Man, it's just a wonderland out there. Winter wonderland. Walking through a window on the line. Hey, good looking. I wasn't even. That, those aren't the lyrics, are they? What, what am I doing? I doubt they're that far back. Jeez. Hey, can you help me with this? He's in your head. Exactly. No, look how far out he's gone. Oh my gosh. There he is. Hey, can you help me with this? Bro, just throw salt on him. Easy. There we go. Did he just get shot? The snowman's got a clock. Thanks, like, oh, Thanks man. Help, so they're, they're, they're literally using, they're mimicking people's voices to lure people out. Which is pretty interesting. They're like, uh, it's a new Predator. Year, and that means no savings at Sid's Electronics Boutique. We've got huge discounts on home electronics. This Sono CC300 VHS camera recorder and player is only $699. Only? From $899 originally. My the goodness. For a new telephone? How about this combination telephone and AM FM clock radio in one? It's only wow. $99.95. Or if you and your kids are stuck inside this winter, how about picking up a TV video sports game 10 for only $89.95? Video games, telephones, and cameras. Only the best at Sid's Electronic Boutique. Located just off Highway 59 and Chippewa Road. Man, freaking local commercials in America are so bizarre. Like, America's January huge, 6th. right? America's a huge place. But there's just, like, these small little communities dotted around each state, each, like, city, each town. 1983. It's like its own slice of a country. Darcy Milbanks failed to make contact with the police yesterday, and I failed to reach Scott's Manor due to the snowstorm. Oh, dear. As the storm cleared today, I did make it to the police station and made contact with a Deputy Blair, mm -hmm. the only person at the station. Hello I was able there. I to tell him the basics of my investigation, but he's preoccupied by the missing police officers. Okay, so let me let me get this straight, actually. Because so, this is in chronological order. The researchers died in the basement. Uh, and then these guys went out to for like what an interview or like to to pick up a transmitter or something they opened the door to the basement a blizzard came out then it went on to the local meeting in that local meeting you find out the that the channel is dying basically and that they need they need to inject funds into it and they kind of deny it and at the end of that you realize that this guy is a private investigator searching for this camera woman's brother who went missing whilst working at this manor. So it all comes from this manor, and whatever's happening there, some evil snowmen are being made.
very it's such an 80s horror you know what i mean the attack of the snowmen however the missing sheriff and his staff are not my concern at the moment darcy <clears throat> darcy milbanks hired me to find her brother and that's what i intend to do i'm currently on route to scott's manor hopefully someone there will be able to provide me with some new information uh or provide you January with death. January 6th supplemental. I have arrived at Scott's Manor. Okay. And I believe I've discovered what happened to all the police in the city. They're all here. Or at least they were here. There are five, so... Eight police cars and several other wow. nondescript vehicles located outside of Scott's Manor. I've tried calling out to see if anyone's around, but there's been no response. People have been here recently, however. Mm -hmm. I'm inside of Scott's Manor now, which is overrun by snow. Yeah. There are several footprints in the snow from various individuals. Okay, so those were the people from before, I'm guessing. So far, I've been able to find some disturbing items around here. I've this is a double-edged dildo. Oh, at least stop it. Stop it. Both empty. I found some shredded, bloody clothing. Though whether that clothing belonged to a police officer, I can't say. For that matter, it might not belong to anyone. Just some oily rags that look like blood. But given the current unusual situation, I am disinclined to believe in innocent explanation. The only area I have yet to explore is the basement. Oh dear, don't go now, in the basement. We'll relieve recording on while I explore. Okay, let's listen to what happens. I reckon that there's some kind of like thing that prevents recording down there. But then again, that makes no sense because the scientists did it, so... I am now in the basement. Oh, okay. I... This basement is strange. The rest of Scott's Manor is still a decrepit, half-destroyed building, but down here, well, there's certainly damage, but there are metal walls, the lights are on, and it looks like there are offices, doors. Mm. The snow has gotten down here too, but this place is like a laboratory or something, and it's in much better shape than what's above. What the hell was this? Some kind of experiment. <clears throat> A bum shelter. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be looking for down here. What is all this? December 12th. Growth rate of organism increases exponentially. In cold I time. knew it. They're, they're experimenting with some kind of freaking... I don't know why they do this. What, why are they even experiment with? Like, new life? What were they... The way? Oh my god. These... These are definitely... Human remains. Oh, it's it's like a skeleton. It's There's like blood everywhere around it. I'm thinking, God, right now my nose is clogged up a bit from the cold because I do not want to be smelling this. <laughs> I need to find out what the hell happened here. What the hell? What happened? This room appears to be some kind of office. Records, maybe. Love it. We're just basically staring at a picture right now, guys, and we're just having to imagine it all through audio, which is pretty good. Bacterial formations, no. 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 Budget information. God. Why do scientists do this? Just give me a name for what this is. <laughs> Micro cassette tapes. They should work on my tape recorder. Let's see. Oh, God. Yeah, good. 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 good, 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 good. Should have brought my own bag, but how the hell was I supposed to know I'd need it? Stuff your pockets. Is this pay dirt? Pay dirt. I've located a video camera in its storage container. Looks like it's from Channel Eighty Three. The hell is this? Let's quickly Google, guys, what pay dirt is. Ground containing or in sufficient quantity to be pro oh, profitably extracted. The gig pays 300 bucks a week. Looks like I just hit pay dirt. Let's, let's pronounce this one. Pay dirt. Pay dirt. What? I did not miss the P. Pay dirt. Oh, shut up. Pay dirt. God, you really gotta pronounce that P. All right. Charging cable and a spare battery. Okay, perfect. I'll take these with me. Hello? Oh. Hello, someone there? Someone, please help me. Hello? Is that the researcher? I'm coming. Oh god, or is that a mimic? It's a mimic. Oh god, please help me. It's okay, man. It's okay. I'm here. It's 
It's so cold. Yeah, I can see that, man. <laughs> You're looking pretty bad. Can you stand? No, no, my legs are they're buried in the snow. <laughs> Can't feel them. Gosh, sounds like Papa me. I'll carry you up, man. Oh my god. I man. What's happened? Your legs. Oh god. They're gone, aren't they? I yes. can't feel my legs. I'm so sorry. I... You have to get out of here. Just leave me. No. No way, man. I'll, I'll carry you. Please, you have to warn them! Hey, can you help me with this? Oh, here comes hey, the alien. Come over here and help no. me with him, man. I need to get him to my car outside. Come on, man. Help me here. Oh, there's someone else outside. Wait, wait a second. You're, you're Stephen Milbanks, aren't you? Your sister hired me to find you. Hey, can you help me with this? <laughs> How are you talking with your lips? Run! Run now! It's not him! It's a mimic! Get They've reanimated his corpse. Get out of here! Warn everyone! They're in the snow! They're in the damn snow! <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. So they're using people, or maybe that that they are the people that they were. Calling this meeting of the Fawn Circle Council for January sixth, nineteen eighty-three, to order. For the sake of brevity, I am waiving the roll call and the pledge of allegiance, so that we can complete the meeting as soon as possible. Uh, put the cult According stuff to what aside. I can see, all council members are present. May I have a second council member confirm this? Second. City clerk, please make a note of it. We all would like to get out of here as soon as possible before the storm hits. So hang on a sec, Mayor Troy Daniels, and that, that was called Scott's Manor, and he was originally the mayor, right? But then he moved from there, it was meant to be renovated, but it didn't get renovated. But it, and it, then the, the manor turned into some kind of research facility. As such, I am striking items 7, 9, and 10 from the agenda to instead be discussed at our next meeting on Tuesday, January 11th. These would be discussing the funding for repavement of Mendota Street this summer, the report on how the new after-school sports program is proceeding, and the petition to open a Kmart store in the vacancy next to Sid's Electronics Boutique on Chippewa Road. Oh dear. Any opposed to this postponement? Postponement? Any opposed to we'll discuss to these topics on the 11th. Let's move into the agenda. First and foremost, Minneapolis has sadly denied our request for additional snowplows. They want to keep them oh. on hand in case the blizzard turns and hits them, but as soon as the storm is clear, they'll send them out to wow. <laughs> the cleanup. Okay. Operations need to be made to prioritize emergency services. Every man for themselves. First, the hospital, the fire station, that sort of thing. We'd like to coordinate with the police on this, but apparently somebody decided not to pay the phone bill because there's still no word from them. Unless the uh, representative from the police headquarters would like to speak up. Because they're all freaking dead. There's only one person now alive. At the conclusion of this meeting, I'm going to head over to the station to find out what's going on with them. If the police aren't here to conduct their duties, we should just move on. Now, I believe Mr. Darren Frederick from Channel 83 wished to address us again and oh, update us go. about the signal interruptions. Here he comes. Hello, oh. Mr. Mayor, never mind. Councilman. You will I'm never Linda be alone Morgan, again. The creative director at K83FC. I know Darren was supposed to speak well, to you today, Liverpool. he was Liverpool sadly FC. unavailable. I've been asked to speak on behalf of the station instead. Go ahead, Melinda. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wanted to take this opportunity to explain to you all why we've been having so many problems with the signal hijackings. For instance, the one that we had with someone seeming to be filming outside of Sid's Electronics Boutique. Yeah? When we receive material for commercials or shows to be broadcast, it's reviewed by our editors and producers of course. to ensure that it complies with state and federal guidelines for transmission. Yep. Now, the signal hijackings occur because somehow someone has a transmitter stronger than our own and uses it primarily during late night, since the late shift at the station has so few personnel. Ah. Now, after Darren appeared before you, we decided to have several producers on hand to oversee that night. And we've continued to have more personnel on hand to watch what happens and do something about I'm it. I'm very, I'm very uh, zoned in on this story right now, so I apologise for not saying anything. I just realised you're just watching me watch this at this at the moment. But it is intriguing stuff like this where you just get really immersed into the story. Like it's not really showing much, and the story on paper 
sounds ridiculous, like evil snowmen uh, hijacking the TV station. But the way it's done and the way it's put together is super good. If that's the case, Ms. Novak. Why was there still a hijack? These walls you erect cannot hold. The broadcast for a few minutes we will creep in. So late at night. And that's what I was getting to, Councilman. Okay. We can't just shut off our broadcast because they're still broadcasting their transmission at the same frequency. We have to stop it by increasing power on our own, which is more expensive. Hence, one of the reasons for our stimulus request. Ah, got we'll you. discuss that more in a minute. In a minute, you got that more in a minute. It's got one of those well, voices where it just comes this is straight where from it the. Gets <laughs> strange, Mr. Mayor. As I said, we had several producers on hand to observe the hijacking in progress, just in case someone at the station was helping them or anything. When the hijacking occurred, we quickly got to work boosting power enough to override their signal. However. When we reviewed the tape of the material we were supposed to broadcast during that time, mm -hmm. we discovered something... odd. Define odd. The transmission the <laughs> hijackers sent somehow replaced the material on that tape. And before you ask, no, nobody was recording the hijacking on it. The material of the hijacking somehow burned itself into the tape on its own. Oh, interesting. Sounds to me like you have a practical joker at your station, Ms. Norvik. I'm telling you, council member, there's something strange about all this. There I is. personally was the one who inserted the tape and pulled it out again. Nobody hit record. The tape was just changed somehow. Rather than worrying about ghosts, <coughs> oh. let's go back to the issue of stimulus funding. Quite frankly, even if we were to consider this Seventy-five thousand dollars over three months is ludicrous. three months. I thought they said three days. Is it three months? Yeah, three. three if you months. want to proceed forward, you'll have to be a little more realistic in your. Oh no! Oh my God! Please, everyone, remain calm. <laughs> it seems we might be ending things a little early today if the power is yeah, out. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. That's stuck in there. What? What is it? The snow. Look. Oh no! How how was the snow covering the doors like that? Oh the god! The only started gosh. a few minutes ago. It, no escape. It's got to be just on the doors, right? No, we're buried. We're completely buried. Calm down, everyone. Calm down. Calm down, we'll everyone. Everyone for help and try to start <laughs> digging. God's got here. a great Darcy, voice. <laughs> shut off the equipment and call the police. Right. No, don't shut off the equipment. Uh really? <laughs> Jan January sex supplemental. I January sex supplemental. I finally made it back to my office. Okay. Unfortunately, it would appear that I will not be leaving again anytime soon. It has been uh, two hours since I fled Scott's Manor and mm -hmm. and what appeared to be Stephen Milbanks. The blizzard hit earlier than anticipated. It must have started. So this is all happening at the same time. I was exploring the base or roughly at the same hard. time. The road had whiteout conditions, and I almost slid out of control on at least three occasions. Hmm. The amount of snow at the office made Bad. it difficult to even open the front door, and it's only getting worse. I have not had time to process what happened in the basement of Scott's Manor, and am attempting to do so now. Something happened. <sighs> Once inside, I attempted to call the police once again without any answer. I also attempted to call Darcy Milbanks, but I only got her answering machine. Something happened to Darcy. I told her to meet with me or to contact me as soon as possible. Her, her brother is. I don't know what her brother is. He's alive, dead. Him. It's not like I was punching a man. He punched him. He's. He is very likely dead. Oh. And I need to tell her that. Rigor mortis? I'm going to start charging the camera battery and play the tape in it when I can. In the meantime, I've also got these micro cassettes and papers. I want to, yeah, I want to hear these. And my spare recorder to listen to them on. Hopefully there's something here that'll help. Okay. So we're going to listen to... Several of these tapes were recovered. In most cases, they were, they were distorted beyond repair and cannot be listened to. Somewhere of mundane scientific data recordings with no apparently useful information... Those that seem to contain meaningful information are presented here. I love how this is set out. It's really good.
Props to the uh, creator. The man who recorded these tapes has been identified as Dr. Robert Chandra. Dr. Chandra had been reported missing four years earlier. September 14th, 1980. What, what is that pose? That's a very author-like pose, isn't it? Like an artist pose. It's one of those things that you do where you're, where you're pondering something that someone just said, aren't you? And you're trying to look, you're trying to look like you're quite smart and intelligent and you just do like the whole... Hmm. Yes, yes. Do you see where you're coming from? I can't see shit. Dr. Chandra reporting. Serial Wait. Number, September 14th, 1982. 1982, Dr. this is Chandra a year before. Reporting. Serial number... 9x47a project freezing rain entry two. freezing rain we've been sitting at the lab means snow well it's not snow manner for three days dr matthews says that he'll have the specimens transferred here within the week was that hail no i don't know what that is completed. the life forms that we recovered well if you can call them life forms of their size more like bacteria really mm -hmm. seem to be attracted to crystalline structures uh, given that growth rate we hope to have something to report within the next. December 17th, 1982. Dr. Chandra reporting. Serial number 9X47A. Project Freezing Rain. Entry 39. Finally, I have something of interest to report. Okay. I'm to announce that we have made contact with the life form. What? The method of contact is, admittedly, a strain on the life form, so we have been unable to maintain conversations for more than a minute or so at a time, but it proves they are intelligent. Mm. They've discerned our alphabet and language, though I'd say it's probably at a K1, K2 level at the moment. We were able to wire a personal computer into the <clears throat> information chamber and use the text-to-speak functions to hold a conversation. Ah. It's amazing. Okay, so that this it all links together with the SIDS electronics with that keyboard that puts it into speech. So now it's going to be that Mortis voice that's going to be saying it back. They actually hear me and communicate. This was the first transmission we got from them. Okay. Hello, you are Dr. Kendra. We are the... What? Damn it. There's a branch from a tree outside, scraping against the window. I'll move to a deeper part of the office away from that. Jeez! Whoa! Okay, what was that just interrupted? Uh We're in the home stretch now with K83FC's late night programming. At 11 p.m., we pay the bills with some paid programming. Okay. At midnight, we close up shop with the end of our broadcast day. Paid programming. Stay tuned for more of the best local TV this side of the Mississippi. This side of the Mississippi. Hi, how's it going, guys? This is Baz, your radio presenter of Medicine Lake Campgrounds. You know what it kind of reminds me of? It reminds me of um, Gemini Home Entertainment. That mixed with Local 58, I think it's got this kind of vibe. This winter, spend a weekend at Medicine Lake. Try to do the voice, hang on. Hey, oh, jeez. Give me a second, it's just a little bit. Sorry about this. Yeah, that was my, uh, that was, that's, that's my normal voice right there, guys. Okay, here we go. Let's go, baby. <gasps> what can you do at Medicine Lake Campground? Ice fishing. We'll go American, guys. Fishing shacks available for rent. Stargaze. Watch the aurora. Aurora Borealis. Search for Stephen Milbanks. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. Always. Feature electricity, a roaring fireplace, and at least one king size bed. 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 I don't know if he knows, guys. He probably have at this point. Look at the local man. He's hanging his head off the bed. I've got myself an actual bed frame. Well, bed thing. And I've got a new mattress as well. Oh, I'm sorry, local man. I'm sorry, bottom man. It's a little bit off topic, but watch this. Look at, look, look at Loki's reaction to this.
Praise be! Oh, but he's actually looking away from me. You son of a bitch! Anyway, let's move on. Hello, the premium. I'm mixing between like, okay, covered, garage, hot tub, full kitchen, two bathrooms, two king beds, game room. You know what? I would actually love to do... I mean, I'd love to do something like that. Go, go off into a cabin, like, nearby a lake or something. I mean, guys, if you know any locations like this, where you can just hire out a cabin, little fireplace, you know, next to amenities or whatever, next to actual, like, entertainment and stuff, kind of like a caravan pack, but I guess it'd be a little bit more luxurious, like, in the, in the mountains, lake. I'd love to do something. The economy. <laughs> Hillside view, one bathroom, hot tub, one king bed, half kitchen, covered porch, 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 porch. Rent one, the embrace! What the? That's just a straight up, like, sh what is that? No windows, no heat, no doors, silence, collapse roof. Honey, it's perfect. I want that one. I want to be embraced. I want to be hugged by a snowman. Our old home. Oh, interesting. Okay. So this is Scott, Scott's Manor. Education, a start. Patience, language, adapting, opportunity. Okay, so obviously this microorganism thing, bacteria, whatever it is, that they managed to communicate with, evolved to such a point where they probably overtook human bodies and started going outwards and maybe that's how they spread or evolve is by like mimicking the people that they were or you know that they infected and it kind of spreads kind of like cordyceps in a way but without the whole um mimic our new home What, the, the body? Right. Okay, that's good. The red will become white. You will be like us. <laughs> Damn. Okay, well, this is why we should just... All right, everyone. Oh. Please take your seats. I have some stuff I can tell you now. Good news and bad news, I'm afraid. Oh, dear. <clears throat> the immediate good news, as you can tell, is that we've got the emergency generator working, so we have heat in the building. That being said... Oh, I'm this is the council meeting. Like, asking you to limit your movement for the time being to this room and the restrooms. We don't know how long we're going to be here, and we need to conserve energy. We have food and supplies for a few days, but hopefully it won't come to that. We managed to get in touch with Minneapolis and a few other neighboring towns and have informed them of our situation. They're going to try <laughs> to get out of here as okay. soon as possible. But the blizzard's hitting them just as hard as it's hit us. What about the cops or the city snowplows? Yes, yeah, well, they're all dead. Our snowplows are in the same predicament, trying to clear paths in order to get to us. They should be able to be in the next few hours, but that brings us to our first bit of bad news. Uh-oh. One of them's Council gone. Member Billy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We've been trying to dig our way out of here through one of the back doors, but it's very clear that it doesn't matter where we try to leave. We're Surrounded. not going anywhere. Oh, dear. The building and the parking lot are almost completely... You know what this reminds me of, guys? It reminds me of that episode of The Simpsons where they get snowed in and they have to stay in the, uh, the school. Covered in snow. And then I think it's Homer and Ned Ned Flanders like save the day by like plowing out the snow. Still plenty of ventilation for the building, but... I'm sorry. But of Our course. cars are completely buried. I'm sorry, but I can't say. It's very possible that they may never run again. Rest assured, we will do everything in our power to help you if your cars were damaged by this storm. Maybe that'll be monetary compensation, maybe some tax relief, I, I don't know. But we'll figure that out later. Mm -hmm. We're just going to focus on trying to get out of here so we can all go home. Fortunately, Ms. Norvik from Channel 83 has gotten in touch with their station, and help is definitely coming. I don't think that that's the how that you want, though. I think that we, 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 we're aware at this point that this station is being hijacked by this freaking organism thing, whatever the hell it is, and therefore anything that comes from this station 
is going through the hijacked thing and they're probably sending a bunch of evil snowmen armies to the to station kill. has a snowplow used for clearing out the station parking lot and it's on its way now ah. in the meantime we're still transmitting to them only audio to conserve power and they'll be kept apprised of our situation i want to thank channel 83 for this generous help rest assured when this crisis is over we'll be most grateful but we can discuss that later mm -hmm. in the meantime we need to keep ourselves occupied try to pass the time and stay warm we'll be distributing blankets and What's happened? Oh my god, Deputy Blair! Deputy Blair! Give him some room! Give him some room! Blanket on him, he looks like he's frozen! Hang on, Deputy De Blair, is that the... okay? What the hell happened? How did you get in here? <sighs> I walked yeah. through. The window. I managed to get it open. I came down here looking for help. Uh. We've been trying to get in touch with the police department for days. Where the hell has everyone been? Where have they been? Where have you been? Where have they been? They're at Scott's fucking manor! Where are you <laughs> told them to go? I, that was days ago. They never came back! Their cars are still fucking out! <laughs> I like this guy. This guy's great. Yeah, I found Sheriff Douglas's- It reminds me of, um, uh, what, I forgot his actual name, Hunter. You know, Meat Canyon. Badge in a snowbank covered in blood! You fucking sent them out there to die! It's very, very good voice I acting. I, I, I sent them to investigate it. That's all. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That's <signal> <laughs> voice. The funds for the operation. Uh. You know what was happening out there? Do you know what happened to my brother? If he was out there, then he's dead. They're all dead. You don't know that. Where is he, Mayor? No, I know they're all dead. Do you know why I came here? Because I was chased! There were what? things out there! Things made of snow! They had human faces on them! Ugh. They chased me until I got here! We need to shut all the doors and windows before they get in! <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Those things were in Scott's Manor! They'll be coming in here soon if we don't- Oh, here they come. Steven, you're alive! Oh, that's not your no, brother. Get away from him! Steven, oh my god. I'm so happy to see you. Where have you been? I've been so worried. That is not Steven! <laughs> Steven, I missed you. I... You're gonna die. Steven, Whatever your name is. Hey, can you help me with this? <laughs> <laughs> nasty they got into the freaking council hall january so now it's just carl carl is like the only one left alive january 7th i think it's morning now i can hear tornado sirens out there but i think it's quiet enough in here for it to work after the glass in my office broke i tried to cover it up as best i could but there was no way i was staying in there mm -hmm. fortunately it looks like the other offices in this building are cleared out Everyone took a three-day weekend on account of the blizzard. That's going to be hell to clean up. Mm -hmm. and unfortunately, it looks like the heater's not working as well as it should. Well, that's sad. It's not freezing like it is outside, but it's not exactly warm either. If I could, yeah, if I could choose, right, between being cold, living cold all the time, or living hot, it would be cold. Because at least with coldness, you can kind of warm up. With heat, it's so hard to cool down without any kind of exterior invention. I lost a bunch of those tapes when the snow blindsided me. I just hope the remaining ones are still useful. I've also still got the camera, so hey, maybe we'll finally get some answers. Yeah, let's see what's on the camera. December 27th, oh. 1982. There Dr. he is Chandra again. Chandra reporting serial number 9X47A, Project Freezing Rain, entry 46. We're back from Christmas, and the skeleton team reported nothing unusual from the life form. It made a few inquiries about where I was, and the team explained about the holiday. What we've been what? focusing on today is actually an interesting ability that the life form has. This this feels like what AI is going to be. Like AI has got to a point now; it's super scary, where it, you, it can basically just do the jobs of people. It's basically just it's written off a few jobs at this point, that's for sure. But I feel like giving information to AI is just empowering it to the point where. We're all going to die if we don't stop. They're going to enslave us, and then we're going to be walking around cleaning their homes. 
ultra-high frequency bands as well as magnetic media. They're attracted to the ultra-high frequency bands in particular, moving towards transmitters that are utilizing it. We think it may be a form of sustenance for them, and in the process of manipulating the field for consumption, they were actually able to alter the transmission to create images. Oh. When we tested it with them, they did a rather impressive likeness to my own face. It was okay, so that they're, they're hijacking that they managed to hijack it's through static and like their initial communications, almost akin to a child's drawing, but yeah. it was impressive nonetheless. However, uh, what is somewhat more concerning is their manipulation of magnetic media, like mm -hmm. tapes. I lost an entire entry this morning because whatever they were doing to manipulate the transmissions affected a tape that was nearby. Okay. It is totally garbled. Hello again, my friends. Uh, could you wait a moment? I'm trying to finish something. No. We want to go about you. We want to go about your minds and your socks and your blood. <laughs> your socks? You mean, you, you... It's not like us. I know it isn't. We can discuss these things at our scheduled talk at 3 p.m. Yeah, uh, destroy it right now. As you just overheard, the life form's speech has been improving and it has lasted for longer periods of time each time we communicate. Yeah, we, yeah but listen, curiosity is going to kill us all. Still, I'd like to put in a request for new insulation and barriers around the test area. Dr. Giroux said that the experiments with the UHF frequencies affected the TV in the break room, so they must have incredible range with their abilities. I'd also like to start having my reports transcribed in case they accidentally damage more tape recordings. Hey, can you mm -hmm. help me with this? Uh, oh, no. Yes, Dr. Matthews, just a moment. <laughs> that's okay, so that's where I came from. Dr. Matthews. But what, that was the last thing he said? Thanks for the help, bud. Oh, hey, interesting. Is that snow? Who the hell tracks snow down here? Uh-oh. That's where it began, I guess. December 30th, 1982, Dr. Chandra reporting. Serial number 9X47A, Project Freezing Rain, Entry 50. Uh huh. I am growing increasingly concerned about the life forms. You should have, when they started talking and asked about your thoughts and your bloods and your, your. This morning, they were able to somehow spontaneously generate small amounts of snow on the other side of the lab. We think they somehow took it from the water molecules in the air. Uh. When we tested the snow that they created, we found trace amounts of the life form inside it. We suspect that they can transmit themselves through the UHF bands. Oh, damn. Dr. Matthews thinks they may be attempting to leave the lab. Yeah. I strongly insist on expediting the installation of frequency jammers and insulation to the first week of the new year. Dr. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is God? What is God, did they just say? Well, that's a tough January question, buddy. 2nd, Dr. Ch okay, January 2nd, 1983. So this is, this is like, so the last tape we heard where the dude, that dude, the investigator was at the manor, that was January 5th. But this guy, they said that this guy was missing for four years. Serial number 9X. Look, is this really necessary? I told you, Chandra, just put it all in the report. I don't have time to listen to every tiny little thing that's concerning you about this project. Dr. Simmons, this is not a tiny little thing. You've seen the same things I have. It's snow, Dr. Chandra. It's not dangerous. They're projecting it out everywhere in the lab. But it hasn't been able to go past the lab now, has it? It's not just... It's uh. not just that. Look, a few days ago, I got a question from them. Okay. What, what is God? I tried to answer them, but they've been quiet until this morning. Do you know what they finally said to me after all that time? We are God. It is we. Well, their opinions of them. Wow. Okay. Are about to take a rather big hit when all that snow melts. True. Yes, but the snow can do other things too. What do you Such mean? as? After the message, I took a closer look at the snow near the incubation chamber. The shape and look of it were crude, but unmistakable. It was my face, Dr. Simmons. They were imitating my face in the snow. Yes, yes, damn it. I'm saying that these things want to be us. Uh. Oh, Dr. Kendra, you will be like us. You will be like us. Got it. Okay. And that's where the whole, I guess, with Stephen, uh, I guess he went from being human to being controlled by these snow creatures 
does it mean by... Uh-oh. So now there's been a breach, meaning more snow's coming in, meaning they can access more, meaning they can now get out of the lab. This... this is way past my pay grade. Fuck mm -hmm. the blizzard. I'm getting out of this town, going for help. I'll take the camera with me. Might have some evidence to prove this is all real. Okay, is he packing up? Okay, he's packing all this things up. I hope your car's got gas. Mine's almost out. Help me pack this up and I'll explain everything on the way. You're not gonna believe this, but some weird shit was happening at school. Oh wait, that's not Darcy. God's manner. I don't think your brother was directly involved, but Oh he's Well, there's no way to say this, but but I think Darcy. Darcy, why are you just standing there? Uh -oh. Thanks for the help, bud. <laughs> Thanks for the help, bud. Shit! Can they be killed? I'm just saying salt, man. Get the salt on there. Winter storm coming. There's seven minutes Ferris, left. Coming to you from Channel 83's Weather Forecast Center. We're sorry to interrupt Dusty Harp's history of jazz, but the state of Minnesota has officially declared a severe weather warning to the following counties. Do not attempt to leave your current location. The blizzard's intensity is harsh, and the temperature is expected to drop into the negatives. Mm. Snowplows and salting vehicles are currently working to clear the roads, and it's considered dangerous to attempt to drive in these conditions. We yeah. are expecting a whopping 20 inches of snow from this blizzard, and the less people there are on the roads, oh the easier it will be for emergency services to get around and do their jobs. Ugh. Bond Circle is expected to get hit particularly hard, so if you're not home already, please hole up in whatever shelter you can find and try to ride out the storm. Do not attempt to step outside tonight. We will return you to our regular programming in a moment, but we'll keep the weather warning display on the bottom of your screen until the current emergency is... Hey, can you help me with this? Oh dear. We're sorry to interrupt. We're sorry. Oh, hang on, the project was called Freezing Grain. So that explains how they can kind of shift molecules from that to snow because it's all water to interrupt leave your current location step outside <laughs> we will return you to the snow the storm is shelter the storm is home step outside tonight the storm is coming for you you will be like us oh dear well they've succeeded oh, oh, like how would you beat these guys just a sh assault gun. Put my tape recorder back to the office. Hopefully this thing has enough juice to last a bit for now. My car is completely buried in the snow and I have no idea where the hell I'm going now. We're out to get help. Just going to keep walking for as long as I can. That's... Hopefully someone... Hopefully... Out here. But that doesn't. They want you to step outside. This guy's outside. Randomly pounding on, on doors for help. They're, they're, they're not gonna let me in. And frankly, it'll all sound crazy anyway. Just, just gotta keep moving. The thing is, they're surrounded by all this snow. That they could just like create more. I'm guessing they need the human whatever the the actual people to spread and they can't just create i mean they can they can emulate people but i think they actually need people to be able to spread similar to like a like a fungal disease it needs people to survive So this whole town is just going to disappear. 
But will it disappear though? It's just going to be ran by these snow people. What's happening? Just keeping an eye on my camera in case it cuts up. Okay, just stop recording. Uh, let me go back. Okay. In the days that followed, expeditions to the town by rescue workers and law enforcement found it almost entirely covered by snow. Several survivors were found, but none who were directly involved in the recovered footage. The survivors were only able to corroborate the severity of the storm. Many were only ba barely able to stay alive after the power and heat went off. Damage to the infrastructure of the town from the snow has forced those survivors to leave what was once Fawn Circle. When the snow melted and law enforcement was able to enter the town and explore, they found only bits and pieces of human remains along with the damaged recordings. If the beings in the snow were real, they seem to have melted when the weather warmed. It is unclear why they didn't expand beyond Fawn Circle, save for the dominant theory among scientists that they were not able to go far from the UHF signals. So they were using the signals of the transmitters to transfer themselves. And obviously that transmitter, unless they got a stronger one, was on it's only able to go as far as the town that they were in. So they literally overtook a town. If they managed to get a, a stronger transmitter, which I think they were planning to do, um, the council wanted to do at some point, that it would have been a whole lot worse. So the University of Minnesota denies any involvement with the research team at Scott's Manor. That was really, really good. Supposedly this was just meant to be like a, just a one-off kind of, um, just a one-off thing as like a joke, but it genuinely was better than most things that tried to be serious. But sometimes I think, not taking yourself so seriously is the best thing you can do. Special thanks to the city of Wilma, Gomo Park, Epidemic Sound, Dreamstein, Pixabay, Analog Horror Creators, my Patreon supporters, viewers like you. That was really good. I actually like really enjoyed that. That was really good. You guys should go check out the video for yourself. Leave a like rating, all that good stuff. Subscribe if you wish. But that was really, really fun. I, I enjoyed that. I got very engrossed and immersed into the story. It was simple but effective. Most of the time, the simplest things are often the best things. If you take a simple idea and kind of twist it a little bit, that's all you need. It's just simple things, guys. I hope you did enjoy. Be sure to go subscribe to Linkara. The link will be in the description down below. If you enjoyed my reaction, why not leave a like, rate, and subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you on the next video. Take care, guys.